Hi, Misha here. And the original plan for this video was to compare the Spanish model Set Me L built by <coughs> Hill and Mac Gunworks, quite possibly the only gun to bear their name as a history map proof, with another Set Me L build. This is also a Model L from Mark Omar, or MCM. Same basic build. But then, before we recorded this, this version was released. Also from Mark Omar, this is the Set Me LC carbine. And I put the little short mag in it because why not? The Model L was the last really major roller delay gun to go into military service. Chamber for 5.56 NATO. And uh, rather briefly used by Spain. But this is not so much a history video as a shooting video. And so we're going to try several ammunition types with all of these. And we're also going to try with original Spanish mags as well as the provided U.S. mag from uh, Mark Omar here. Run them through their paces and uh, then kind of discuss what we discovered and then I'll you know give my opinion on which I kind of think is the best or most appealing. So with that said, enough rambling, let's just cut over to the range and then we'll come back to the table. Mark Omar, set me out first shots. <laughs> But it didn't hurt open dirt. <laughs> Go ahead. HMG. Uh, spent casing. Mm -hmm. Still have ammo left. A lower. Go ahead. Clear. Yeah. All right, the Mark Amar with the Spanish mag and wolf ammo. HMG with Wolf and Spanish Mag. Wolf and the Markamar L. Works with uh, Brown L's re reproduction retro waffle mags, so. It's a thing. Yeah. HMG with Silver Bear. Clear. I'd say that was the one it liked. The Marco Mar L with the Gila. <laughs> HMG with a Gila. Does not seem to like a Gila. Let's try it again. Here. Hmm. You think that would be hotter ammo? Sure, I'm with Good. It's funny, is that I don't even feel it like it's ejecting fine. Weird. Hmm. Yeah. All right, HMG with a Gila. Hands getting tight. 
just not. It's not quite kicking the bolt back. Well, you got a string there at least. There's one yeah. live round left. Get out. Yeah, that was it. Yeah. Now the MCM, and I'm tired of it working, so I'm going to try Tula. So, yeah, it needs Tula. That's a thing. Huh. Okay, HMG with Tula. Why not? So it worked with Tula. Steel case Russian cheapo ammo that has no power and did not work with Aguila 62 grain. What it's not working with are brass case. Every oh. steel case we seem to try and it works fine. Oh, that's a good point. Interesting. HMG with full mag of wolf. Alrighty. So, that was the two L rifles. Started off using the exact same mag and ammo just to get them started. What about the LC carbine? How would it do? Basically, it's the same gun, but you have a button here to retract the stock. I've noticed with this one, it's a little tight. I like to push it in and then it comes out. And then it locks quite securely. Very HK style, but unlike the HK, it has a nice curvy rubber butt plate. Originally, not only did this have the collapsing stock in military service, it also had a shorter barrel instead of the 15.7 inch barrel of the standard rifle. It had a 12.6, which obviously would be well into SBR territory. So what Mark Omar did, they made an extension to get it out to 16 inches with a late style flash hider style on it. And they blind pinned it down here. So if you want to SBR it, after you get your paper back, you can pop that off. They even very politely include the original flash hider in the box so after you take your extension off you can put your original flash hider on other changes they had to do because the recoil system cannot be in the stock they had to move it all up into the receiver meaning a whole new spring and rod they had to lighten the bolt carrier by about three ounces and they had to go to a new caulking support in the tube to work with the new bolt carrier system so while you can convert between an L and an LC, you have to not only replace the stock, but the bolt carrier, the caulking system, and the spring. And of course, an original would have this shorter barrel. It would also not have the bayonet lug. So in unique sight base, yada yada. So with that said, with the new recoil system, which has a shorter, shorter travel and everything. How did it do at the range? Well, take a look. Set me, Elsie. There we go. LC was Silver Bear. with little Spanish Mac and Wolf. Helps if I take the safety off. Yeah, you're good. Just want to make sure that safety works, that's all. All right, the LC with the Gila. And we're open. So some interesting shooting results. And 
there is some history and things about the HMG and MCM builds that probably are contributing factors. It can go a long way towards explaining what we've found out. I will say first off that the LC carbine ran with everything as did the where is it at here the L from Marco Mar they also did not seem to be ammunition picky and the HMG runs quite well with steel case but it seems to have a problem with brass it had minor issues with PPU but actually it had quite large issues with Gila on the other hand it ran Wolf Silver Bear and Tula surprisingly with basically no hiccups at all. <clears throat> so, because it's relevant, history time, why not? And then we'll get up and kind of examine them one-on-one. -on -one. The set meal dates all the way back to the 1960s when the Spanish government, Spanish military, first started talking with SETME to develop a 223, at that time a very new caliber that everyone was working with, version of the Model C. At first they thought, yeah, just scale it down, kind of take the HK route that they did with the HK-33. But as time would go on, they would find some issues they needed to overcome. Other things, they just said, hey, while we're doing this, we should correct this, do that. There was effort to make it a lighter weapon, a cheaper, easier to produce weapon, easier to mount optics on. For various reasons, there were delays, and so real development did not start until the 1970s, and the earliest prototypes appeared around 1980. Throughout 1981 and 82, these would go through government testing and trials, and then in 1984, it would be officially adopted into the Army, and full production was authorized. At the same time, the government ordered that the older Model Cs be phased out to make room for the new Ls. Production would be set up not at SETME, but at the Santa Barbara factory. That was pretty much what happened in 1985. And the first rifles were produced in 1986. At least first production rifles, not just prototypes. With the first ones delivered to the Army in 1987. And it's worth pointing out that these Army guns were kind of locked into a certain price point. Which would come back to haunt Santa Barbara. Whereas guns that went to the Garda Civil, essentially the police, could be bought at whatever was kind of a fair market value. This meant the Garda Civil guns just tended to look nicer because they were paid better. The military guns, the army guns, they would sometimes cut some corners to save a penny here and there. Now I am going to do a video later when I have pieces to show you talking about early and late furniture. But there were changes. For example, the early handguard they found quickly did not vent heat. So they went to this style here. Also, the early pistol grip was very square. It was larger than this and didn't have the curve in the back. They went to a more ergonomic grip. The stock didn't change a whole lot. Early on in development, they were going to do more of a diopter rear sight, but then they went to the two aperture 
flip, flip I believe it's 200 and 400 meters the first versions would have three prong flash adders later versions would have enclosed birdcage quite similar to that seen on the set me model C as I already showed you there's no bayonet lug as part of this carbine front side base but there is one as part of the side base on this gun and on this gun the sling swivel can rotate to some degree it's mostly to make disassembly easier but it's there everything's held on with push pins the handguard has one pin in the front the buttstock has two pins in the back for either the L or LC and the trigger pack isn't a trigger pack exactly this is all one piece with the stamped receiver. There is a self-contained pack inside held on by a push pin. But it's not HK style. Typical AR release. Magazines are At the shortest 12 rounds. These are typically used for training, ceremonial, or guard. I think the 12 round just looks neat in the carbine. <laughs> but the standard magazine was 30. Talk more about these in a minute. And there was also an in between 20 round, which I don't have, unfortunately. I apologize. The sling was very similar to that used on the Semi Model C. It was usually this nylon material. The bayonet was a similar style to the Semi, but different, not interchangeable. As you saw, it mounts above the barrel. Well, these were going into the military, and they were already having problems. They were first sent to combat for the 1999, excuse me, that'd be something, 1991 Gulf War in Iraq. And as poorly as some other guns, like the L-85 or even M-16, showed themselves, the Sydney Model L did even worse. So much so that some Spanish troops were allowed to acquire M16s to replace them with. And it was really this showing in Iraq in 1991 that ultimately led to this being halted. In that year, these are still in production. And even they were still trying to develop it and perfect it. But after that, the Spanish government just axed the whole program towards the end of that year. They had had quite a few issues. It's also worth pointing out that they only had one source of ammunition, one supplier, I and I. Essentially, the National Industry Institute, they made the 556 by 45 ammunition for the Setmiel for the Spanish government. And this ammo was known to have really fast, hot burning powder, which led to high chamber pressure spikes. It also, because it burned, it was really dirty, it gummed up the action. And it was bad enough that when NATO troops were on operations with Spain, they were told not to use, not to get Spanish ammunition in their guns, you know, whatever they might have been. 
Also, the magazines were problematic, so much so that many Spanish soldiers tried to get their hands on Stanag mags like these. The uh, Semi is Stanag mag compatible, but the mags that they actually built for these are a copy of a 1980s FN C mag. They are thick bodied, made of steel. The follower isn't made to have a bolt hole open. And the floor plate is really weird. It's just a single piece and it's you can press in on it. It's you can see how they would like yeah, it's just it's unusual. So it's a steel mag, but not an awesome design. And so the magazines gave issues. So while the guns had problems, a lot of it could be traced to the ammunition used and the mags. Now, Mark Omar, when they did either of their guns, the L, C, or L, they basically rebuilt. They didn't actually use a whole lot of original parts. For one thing, the furniture, all three pieces, is U.S. made. The receiver is U.S. made. The barrel is U.S. made. Um, of course, your front sight base is original, but they actually completely redid the front sight itself. They went. They not only went to a thinner post, they also changed how it sits in the base. On top of that, one thing, the rear sight adjustment here had two little forks or arms that could break off, so they changed that to a new style that was more durable. There's the original. And they also opened up one of the apertures for easier use. But more importantly for the reliability factor, they installed all new springs. Recoil spring, extractor, ejector, most of those are either totally rebuilt parts or just brand new U.S. made parts. And their goal was to get it to run with everything. Whereas the HMG, it's mostly original parts. You have original furniture, you have a original but modified trigger pack for the most part, you have the original recoil spring, original bolt parts, they did not modify the sights. So these run more like the originals, which were meant for hot, fast burning, hard primer, kind of shitty ammo, frankly. Whereas the HM, excuse me, the MCMs were built to take more American ammo. And I think this is why they run really well with all types of ammo, whereas the HMG is pickier. Because it is functionally much more like the military version. Just to show you, that this, when it has the ammo it likes, runs quite well. Here's some older clips from last summer when this rifle was brand new. Set me model it. Very smooth. Good. Set me model it. The HMG really does run well when it has the ammo that suits it. And the MCM just runs well. However, I will say this. The MCM, while it has a very pleasant recoil impulse, does have a little more felt recoil. Remember, this is a roller-delayed blowback, so it does have more felt recoil than the HMG. 
The HMG is just about the softest shooting 223 I've ever picked up. When it runs, it's just butter. And you saw even earlier when it was failing to function, it was very easy for me to open it and just extract the RAM manually. <sighs> Decided to put the bayonet on for you. Why not? It will fit the MCM as well. I tried it earlier. As it should. Now it's worth saying, this is an original flash hider. The uh, HMG, typically, it comes with its own U.S.-made flash hider. Here it is. It, um... Do, 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 do. The prongs look similar, but the back part is totally, totally different. Move it up here, cause, whereas the uh, Marco Mar does come with the original flash header. See the the front is the same, but the back is just a totally different critter. Here is where your grenade ring goes or your bipod. There's your side of that bayonet lug. Let's talk about some differences. The HMG's barrel, now both of these barrels are 16 inches. The original military barrel is 400 millimeters or 15.7 inches. So it has to be extended to make it legal here. But it's not enough of an extension even to bother the bayonet. The HMG's barrel is a little bit thinner profile than the MCM. Not by much, but just a little bit. MCM gave a whole new cocking handle spring. It's very, I mean, it's nice and stout. The HMG spring is original. And yeah, a little bit weaker. Now this is one of the guns built by HMG for Copper Custom using unissued or very lightly issued parts sets. So the parts don't have a lot of wear. So aside from all the new springs and stuff, the big difference is the receivers. These are two different receivers. Now they're both stamped receivers. On this side, we can see how they weld the front trunnion in. This is very original style. Whereas the MCM, they really go heavy duty with the weld. It's the whole thing, not just a couple of spot welds. They also have a rib here, which is, I'll try to show you, on the front of the magwell, where the uh, two halves join together, there's a very noticeable seam. Whereas on the HMG, it's a very clean area. Now, from what I understand, on the original guns, it is more of a visible weld than so clean like this. But on the original guns, the front welds are like these. Just a couple of small spots. There's also a little bit of ribbing difference. The HMG has, oh, excuse me, the MCM has a little more. So it's a little more authentic on the rib end. <laughs> but on the other hand, the lines stamped in are just a little bit softer. On the HMG, this, the lines are a little bit sharper and more well-defined. Here's how the rear sight is welded on. Pretty clean. Here's the <sighs> whole area there. Here, not bad. 
the weld with a caulking tube attaches to the receiver I would say is a little bit cleaner on the HMG but it doesn't look bad on the MCM not at all and of course both are green but the HMG has more of a matte finish the MCM is more of a take this away before I forget more of a shiny finish And again, a lot of the HMG parts are just as is from the kit, but pretty much every single part on the MCM is either brand new US made or totally stripped and refinished. But there is one big thing on the receivers to mention. Flipping them back over. I'm of course talking about at the edge of the ejection port here the shell deflector this ridge that flares up at the corner this is very very authentic to the original and something sadly lacking on the HMG receiver. Now before you think too badly of them like they missed it, they, they didn't miss it, they chose not to do it and that's because with a stamped receiver like this that little flange, that little flare adds so much money you wouldn't believe to the tooling costs. And that kind of gets us to one point, too. The HMG gun, while it was made with care, to some extent, was made to make a profit. The MCM gun really wasn't. It was made as a passion project. By Dave Bain. He did not do this because he wanted or needed to make money. He did this because he wanted to make the best set me L possible. Hence why he made all new replica furniture. He even made new replica butt plates. He basically just was really enamored or is really enamored with the set me L. But the original Spanish gun had issues. He thought he could correct some of those, which he really, frankly, has. On top of that, a lot of the parts kits imported were well used. Some of them even abused. And instead of putting used parts on his gun that look like used parts, he just replaced them. <laughs> which is, I guess, what I want to do with it. So adding a flare, even though it was a huge financial thing, did not really... Um, factor in and I think that's one of the biggest uh, attractive parts to the MCM gun is the mag well flare it's also truly nice to have a brass deflector to keep ejection and all that going good and this one works without it as you saw but it's nice to have it if you can kind of looking over these the thing is the MCM is a better gun it looks better it will run with virtually any ammo type it's essentially all new parts now generation one they really made the mag well tight to the point that the thick Spanish steel mags wouldn't fit it. And to me, that was a bit of a turnoff. I know Stanag mags, or you know, regular air mags, are probably better, but I really wanted to be able to use original Spanish mags. Okay? Well, now with the Gen 2 in 2019, they loosened up the mag well just a bit now that 
Spanish mags will fit. So when they made that upgrade, update, whatever you'd like to call it, it corrected one of my mm, reservations. Whereas the HMG, from the beginning, took Spanish mags or Stenag mags. So with that said, that really addressed one of the things with the Makomar. I also really like that it comes with the original flash hider screwed on. But as you see with mine, it's no problem to put an original on the HMG. They have the same thread pitch. So if you're wanting the best gun, especially for a shooter, it's the MCM. With the only detraction, because of the new springs and how it's been reworked, it's going to have a little bit more felt recoil. But not much. However, if you want a gun as close as possible to the original Spanish gun, it's perhaps the HMG. Because it replicates the original gun, including its faults and failures. Mostly because the parts in it are original parts. And again, the only glaring that just comes out and hits you in the face thing wrong with it is the lack of having the shell deflector at the edge of the ejection port. And you talk to anyone who's ever fired a full auto military set me, they'll tell you it can be quite a jam matic especially if it doesn't have the ammo it likes. So yeah. In Spain, like I said, in 1991, they ended production at the end of the year. They kind of suspended it for a bit to investigate. By 1995 or so, it was clear they were just going to adopt something new and more modern. They started holding trials. They got serious in 1998. And then in 1999, they selected the Heckler & Koch G36E. Then Spain obtained a production license. This is interesting because this is the first foreign design adopted for the Spanish army in half a century. They took great pride in having developed a lot of their own firearms before that. So as the G36E started to come in, the Setme Model Ls started to trickle out. By 2002, most of them were out of frontline service, and they were really only being used by some second line units. And of course, police units, the Guard of Civil, hang on, hung on to theirs for some time. And then the parts kits uh, came over here, and uh, that's it. The Model L was only ever used by the Spanish Army. It was never exported to other armies. The initial order back in the 80s was for 60,000, and the total production run, the best number anyone knows, is around 100,000. The variants were the L, which was 36 and a half inches long with a 15 and 7 inch barrel. It weighed 7.5 pounds. The LC, the Quarto Carbine, which was intended for paratroopers, the Marines, other special forces. It had a 12.6 inch barrel. It was about 33.9 inches long, down to 26.4 inches with the stock collapsed in. It weighed a little more because of the stock at 20 excuse me, at uh, 7.8 uh, pounds. And as I said, it, you know, was pretty short with the barrel. And of course the LV, also known as the Marksman's variant, it mounted a four-power telescopic sight on a Stanag mount on top of the receiver. Scopes were either made in Britain or Spain. And it was probably produced in the smallest numbers, although I don't have a, a variant breakdown. The only effort to export the Setme L actually came after it was being retired out of service. 
an effort was made to convert some to semi-auto only and sell them to collectors in Europe but because of European gun laws and also this gun's dubious reputation frankly that didn't work so instead they ended up just cutting them up and sending them to us and uh, honestly this gun's probably gotten more love here in America in the last few years than it ever has anywhere else it just didn't work for several reasons but with that I think I will leave it for another video I think I hope this has been pretty in-depth for you I have tried my best without rambling too awfully long I can't tell you which is definitively better because both L's have their pros and cons in my mind. I love that the HMG has so many original parts. And I love how soft it shoots. I love that the MCM was put together with so much care and attention. And feels and looks so nice. And eats any kind of ammo and has the correct profile receiver. And of course, they're the only ones who've done the carbine up here with the collapsing stock. So if that's what you want, you're gonna you're gonna do an MCM. So you know the decision is yours, and the obvious correct answer is get both. Set me model L, last mag of the day. Well, there you have it, folks. Figured I'd end with the original, the first one, and in some ways, still a good one, but in other ways, topped by the newer Marco Moore. This MEO, a rifle that you really couldn't get in America for the longest time until the parts kit started to appear. And then, you know, now we actually were given two quality builds using those kits so something that used to be virtually unobtainium here is gettable not cheap admittedly but gettable and uh kind of for people who like that 80s cool factor and just something different hey worth picking up either hmg or marco mar probably fun shooter and just you know yeah something a little different we have covered more in the history on this on other videos, so check out the playlist. Figured with this one here, put it on its little bipod, kind of a cool bipod. It's the same as the uh, Set Me Model C. It actually compacts up into a tiny little belt pouch. But yeah. If you have any questions or would like to share your own experiences with an HMG or MCM set me L, we'd love to talk about it below. And sorry, didn't have the LV, which is, like I said earlier, identical to this one. Just has a scope mount on top. For some reason, scope mounts, scopes, I just don't have a use for. Okay, I don't know why. But yeah, Marco Bar has done a small run of LVs as well if you're a collect them all type mentality. We greatly appreciate it. And if you'd like to help support the channel, please check out the link to our Patreon page. My figure can't quite reach that safety. <laughs> Problem with a lot of the HK pattern type guns. But yeah, if you'd like to help support us, please check out the link to our Patreon page. Like, share, and subscribe. All the stuff that everyone on YouTube tells you. And uh, yeah, please tune in again next time for another hopefully interesting video. This is Misha, and also on behalf of Jay, we will both catch you very soon next time. It smells like circus carnival corn dogs. Mmm, corn dogs. Mm. Are you hungry yet? Let's go eat.